This is a Ludwig 5x14 maple snare drum from 1969 that I cleaned and restored to playing condition. I identified the year by uh, using the serial number on the badge as well as uh, identifying some of the characteristics of the parts in the shell. 1969 was the year that Ludwig transitioned from the Keystone badge to the new blue and olive badge with the block logo. Uh, this badge was actually in pretty rough shape when I first got it. It was bent away from the shell and uh, it, it was a problem that was typical with these badges when they first came out. They're very pointy on the edges and they're notorious for getting snagged on things and pulling away from the shell and bending. Uh, Ludwig fixed that uh, years later by rounding out the corners, so you'll see that in future vintages. Um, the corners are rounded on the badges. This badge I actually repaired by doing a little bit of sanding. I taped off around it and I sanded underneath. I used some contact cement and pressed it back down to the shell and it stayed perfectly and it looks great. I didn't have to uh, ruin the grommet or change anything about it, so it's pretty much original condition. Another thing that was uh, changing around this, this era was the snare strainers. They had, in the late 60s, Ludwig introduced the P85 snare strainer, which is the same one that they use today. A slight cosmetic change, it's chrome now, and it used to have the black front on it, and also a different hole configuration to attach the snares at the bottom. This is its predecessor, the predecessor, the P83, snare strainer. Um, I went with that for this drum uh, because, well, I found one actually that seemed a bit unique. Uh, it has a block logo on it. Typically the P83's came before the P85 and, and they have the script logo or even the 60's editions have the WFL logo in some cases. Um, this one has the block logo and I thought it was kind of a cool you know, nod to the transition era that was going on where the block matches the, uh, the badge. I also have the matching uh, block logo butt plate on this one. Um, the shell is in great shape. It's the original red sparkle finish, the red sparkle wrap. There were no scuffs or scratches really at all. I took the hardware off and cleaned it up and gave it a light polish. The, the lugs themselves are also in great shape. There was virtually no rusting or pitting, so I did some light cleaning on it and then used Brasso polish just to uh, brighten up the chrome. The hoops were not original that were on this drum, and they were kind of thin and bent, and uh, they, were, they were rusted and pitted. So I decided to upgrade the hoops, and I put on 2.3 millimeter triple flange hoops. Um, I also bought new lug screws. I took out the tone control, which I typically do on my snare drums. I saved it in case I want to preserve, you know, restore the drum. But there's no sense having the extra stuff rattling around in there when I prefer to use like something light on the top of the head if I'm going to dampen. I'll use a little bit of moon gel or something. Um, so other things that were going on in this era, uh, this is when they transitioned the materials of the shells too. Uh, in 1968, they started using maple and poplar to replace what was typically their mahogany and poplar shells. Uh, this is a three-ply maple poplar maple shell with the reinforcement rings. Uh, they also stopped painting the white, the white interior coat on the shells when they switched to maple, leaving a nice wood finish inside. And this one's in great shape. I used a little bit of furniture polish in there just to sort of preserve the wood, but it really didn't need much at all. It's in great shape. For the heads, I'm using uh, Snare Side Ambassador on the bottom, and I'm using the Pure Sound 16 strand snares. And on the top, I'm using a Coated Ambassador, pretty typical. Um, so I'm really happy with how this drum came out. Uh, it looks great, and it sounds great, and I'm really uh, looking forward to using it on gigs. Let's hear how it sounds.
used this recently on a gig, but I look forward to it. It's a different sound. I can crank it up and kind of get a little more of a crack out of it. But in this range, it really shows off the wood sounds. Um, so that's it. Red Sparkle, 1969. Ludwig Maple Snare Drum.